Hello everyone, I'm Nitsaho and I'm here with a weekly draft video for the first time in a while since Hour of Devastation is now on Magic Online. We're going to go ahead and jump in the queue and I'll see you when the draft fires. Okay, so we have a pretty strong rare in our pack. Um, Resilient Kenra is pretty strong. I think it's worth considering taking here. It just is a great two drop and then in the late game it becomes, you know, a bigger creature who pumps something even more. Uh, open Fire is a very good removal spell, but I think Resilient Kenra is probably better. I also like uh, Oasis Ritualist a decent amount. I don't love first picking it. Same with Hope Tender. I like it, but I don't love first picking it. There's sort of a problem in this pack, though, and that is that there's lots of good green cards. And that's worth thinking about, certainly, um, because, like, next person's probably going to take, like, Overcome. Person after that might take Hope Tender. Well, Open Fire will probably get taken somewhere, but I think we still take the Kenra. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take the Kenra. It's just such a good card at every stage of the game. Okay. Here, now I guess we take an open fire. We did just passed one. I like it a little more than Manticore Eternal, who I think is the next best card in this pack, probably. Um, but yeah, open fire is just a good removal spell. So is Sandblast, but I like open fire even more. It's not conditional, and that's a big deal. So we'll take open fire. Okay. This pack has an Imaginary Threats, which I haven't had a chance to play with yet. It's a card that I really wanted to play with. I haven't had it played against me yet either. This is only my third draft of this format. Um, and it, it seems like it could, should be good between being able to cycle when it's not good and when it's good being really good. Um, we could just take a three drop here as well. But I do have a feeling green's not going to be ultra open. Even though we took the Kenra, sort of, you know, seeing what will happen. I, I'm not going to be surprised if I don't see much green. And, you know, Harrier Naga's fine, but I feel like Imaginary Threats is probably going to be better. Um, yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, it has a very interesting effect. It makes your opponent's creatures attack you, which we've seen before, but then it also doesn't let them untap. And that's two an attack, two attack phases of not letting them... Uh, one attack phase where they can't attack and one blocking uh, when you attack where they can't block. Talking's hard. So Ramunap Excavator is actually worth something, and that is relevant when you're drafting on Magic Online because it makes things cheaper um, on the whole um so that's worth keeping in mind um let's see how much it's worth i don't know if it's worth enough i mean it has some upside too and it's in a color we already have some stuff in um it's probably just what i want to take here although bitter blow sharpshooters is also pretty good so I just take the excavator i think i just take the excavator yeah it's worth a few tickets and it's just like a playable card okay ronis is stalwart's a pretty good green card to be around this late we definitely take that very happily okay so this pack is an interesting one i like the ritualist but i think i like aerial guide even more um it's just a great card we, Spellweaver Eternal and Unquenchable Thirst are things I wouldn't mind having. We would probably like Desert since we have the Excavator, and they're nice to have in general, but Aerial Guide's really good. This will be the second draft in a row where I draft an open fire and then end up not being able to play red. Green seems surprisingly open given what we've passed. Um, maybe it's just really deep in these packs, but getting a Stalwart and an Excavator, and there was other playable green cards in that pack too, is a pretty good sign. Hero Guide is just great. I mean, I think it's actually at its best in a green deck, too, because it just lets you throw big guys up in the air and attack with them. Hostile Desert, not very good, even though it's a desert and could work, I guess. Except it doesn't. Well, if it dies, I guess I could get it back with my Excavator. So Frilled Sandwall is fine. Shans All three of these cards are good. Kind of leaning towards the Ritualist, because it gives me the ability to fix and ramp. And I like both of those things. It's not quite as maybe as aggressive as the other picks, but especially the Sand Walla, who's pretty aggressive. Okay, so. Gift of Strength is a good trick. The question is whether I'd rather have like a medium trick or a very good sideboard card. 
Although it's definitely not official that we're playing blue at this point. Um, Real Form's only going to be good. It is good, but it's only going to be good in a spells-heavy deck, and that's not where we are. Granitic Titan's okay, but I think I'd rather have Jace's Defeater, Gift of Strength. Um, this is something that takes some figuring out in the format. Is it better to have a very good sideboard card or a decent but not amazing card in my main board? I think I'm going to take the trick for now, but we'll see see how this format plays out. I could take another Ritualist or a Reed Stalker, and I think I'd rather have the Ritualist. Just This gives us two pieces of fixing, and that is pretty important, I think. Especially because we don't know what our second color is anyway. We may end up splashing some things um, and being mostly green, which I still don't understand how this card's making it to me. But It is a little slow, especially against some of the faster decks in the format, but... You know, I haven't drafted this format a ton yet, but my initial analysis of the format said it's just not going to be quite as fast as Triple Amonkhet. So this pro wouldn't have been as good in Triple Amonkhet, but we're not in Triple Amonkhet anymore. I like Spellweaver Eternal fine. Um, I like it more than Strategic Planning for sure. We don't need Traveler's Am Amulet. We're playing green, so we already have two Ritualists. We don't need that for fixing. This is a perfectly fine card. Um, it's definitely better if you have a bunch of spells. Uh, we have some. Though, I mean, and as far as just being in an aggro deck, it's a pretty good little two drop. Uh, if your opponent decides to trade with it, they still take two in the process and trade a card. So, you know, I'm fine with that generally. Um, beneath the Sands. I'm thinking about just taking the Bone Slasher in the event that blue isn't open enough. I don't think I need this fixing, although it is a desert. We don't have any cards that really care about that at this point, although there's a possibility we do. Beneath the Sands is fixing. We don't really need either when we have two Ritualists. I think I'll just take the Bone Slasher, and if we end up playing Black, it's a perfectly fine card. Okay, so we're just not going to have enough spells for Riddle Form. I can tell you that. Um, so, I mean, maybe there's a chance, but I don't think so, because green's our base color, not blue. I'll take Tragic Lesson, though. I don't think this deck wants it. Here, we'll, we'll take Beneath the Sands. And we'll take a Sunset Pyramid. Not a card I love, although I do want to play it in a super grindy control deck where I like first pick uh, Hour of Devastation, you know, something like that. It would definitely be good in a deck that can make the game go long. Hour of Glory. It's not Hour of Devastation, but it is pretty good. And our options... Other options aren't that appealing. Um, our blue cards aren't great. We've got Avon Reed Stalker and Countervailing Winds, which are both... Fine-ish. I like the Reed Stalker a little more than Countervailing Wind. Strategic Planning's okay, but I don't think our deck is moving towards being a control deck. So, we also have Frontline Devastator, but Hour of Glory is just better. It's just a premium removal spell, or at least close to one. It's a little expensive, but not too expensive. And I can splash it, even if I do end up playing blue instead. So, we're going to go ahead and take it. There are deserts here, but, uh, you know, the desert payoffs in this color, you know, if I get... Um, Unquenchable Thirst, I'm going to wish I had some Deserts, I guess, but I'm not I'm not too concerned. I do love Aerial Guide, so I would be happier to just splash the Hour of Glory with two Oasis Ritualists and, like, one Swamp. That would be perfectly fine with me. Um, but we'll see. Burning Fist Minotaur is a pretty good red card. Um... What else we got here? We got our friend Harrier Naga, who's just a good three drop. We also have a puncturing blow. Um, we could still dip into red too. I mean, and our blue is good, but it's not the best ever or anything. Um, I could lose blue and not hate it. Do I want puncturing blow or burning fist minotaur? I think there is a resounding maybe as the answer to that question. Zero the true is good, by the way, but. We're not, we're not dipping into that at all. Um, removal is good. We don't have a ton of it at this point, although we have more. If hmm, if we take a red card, we also probably or might play open fire. Um, I'm going to take the good aggressive creature here in red, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, well... This is the kind of card that you can first pick and build a control deck too, although the art's not loading. It's Chaos Maw, which just blows up the board and is huge. Um, okay, and we can take Open Fire number two here, which I don't hate, um, which I think sort of is going to cement us into red. And we'll probably splash Hour of Glory and 
don't play these blue cards. I think that has a good chance of cementing us into red anyway. Um, open fire is good. These guys are good too, but you have to be like a really grindy deck to make Chaos Maw work. Magmaroth needs a lot of spells to work. Um, whereas like Kenra Scrapper and Open Fire are just good in any red deck. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the Open Fire here. Worth noting it can dome opponents. That's not a lot of stuff that can do that. Okay, I was just saying, cementing me into red. <laughs> then I got past an Ominous Sphinx. What's going on here? The red card here is not great. There's some decent green cards here. Another Ritualist, a couple of a Feral Prowler and a Gift of Strength. But Ominous Sphinx is far and away the best card in this pack. So I'm going to take it. We may still end up pivoting back into blue. It wouldn't be the worst. Um, but then there's this pack, which doesn't really make me feel great about playing anything. <laughs> the Oketra's Avenger is very good. Dauntless Haven's fine. Um, we probably just take Frontline Devastator. It's a fine card, but nothing ultra exciting. Um, but yeah, I think it's what we take. The blue here is okay, but it's not Ominous Sphinx. So we'll take the Devastator. Resolute Survivors. That's a pretty good gold card. Um, we're definitely taking Struggle to Survive. And now I think that will cement us into red. We can actually play the green half, but really all that matters is how good Struggle is. Um, we have a ton of good removal now all of a sudden since we dipped into red. May not even need to splash Hour of Glory anymore. Um, we're just taking Struggle here, though. It's, it's very good. So, like, now I'm definitely not in blue. Um, yeah, and we're going to take a Kenra Scrapper here pretty happily. Is Kenra Scrapper better than Harrier Naga? I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. Um, decent combat trick and Kindled Fury or another Devastator. I think I'll take the Devastator. So we have two open fires, struggle to survive... Not desperate for removal, so I may not splash Hour of Glory in the end. If we don't end up with splashing or ramping into things, so maybe we should have taken Chaos Maw, huh? With two Oasis Ritualists. Would have let me play it on turn five. Would also kill most of my board, but... I don't have anything that synergizes with our Excavator yet, but that's okay. I think switching to red was the right choice. Our biggest... Regret is Ominous Sphinx for sure that we're not playing that. Um, so Crash Through. None of the cards in this pack are very good. Um, like all of them are medium. I like Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs in, an act, in, a, in a control deck, but we're not, we're not that. Um, Countervailing Winds is okay. I guess I'll take Beneath the Sands though. In case I have a very desperate need to fix, which could happen. Here I think I'm going to take the Sandwalla over the Hippo. Ceridon's good, but we don't have any deserts, and there's a lot fewer of them in the third pack, so we didn't do a very good job of picking up deserts. And I think the Sandwalla is just a solid little early game creature. I think we need um, more ones and twos, really, to feel good about this deck. Okay, so here we've got Cunning Survivor, which is fine. Grizzly Survivor is good, too, but there's still sort of a... Small chance we play blue, so I guess I'll take the blue one. Another Ritualist. I don't know if I'm going to play three, but we'll take it. I think people are underrating this card here in the early stages of this format. Makes me wish I had that Chaos Maw, I can tell you that. <laughs> Chaos Maw doesn't kill the Ritualist either, because it does three to everything. What a combo that would have been. Kills all of our other creatures, <laughs> but not the Ritualists. Sure, I'll take a two drop. And I'll take another one. I mean, ideally I won't play both of them, or maybe even either of them, but it's a fine two drop. Okay, well, I do like Edifice of Authority. It's a little more at home in a more gr grindier deck, but it's a good place to spend my mana for my Oasis Ritualists, certainly. Bloodless Insider is good if you're a super aggressive deck. I don't know that I feel like I'm one of those. Maybe I should. Um, 
But I'm leaning towards Edifice. It can just it can just win games. If games go long, it's, you're just going to win usually if you have Edifice of Authority. So I think I'll take it. I like it too much. Merciless Javelinier. That's something we could splash if we want to with our three Oasis Ritualists. Um, it's also an Electrify, which is fine. Javelinier or Electrify. Shed Weakness is an okay trick too. We have so many fours. Something, I mean, right now I'd probably cut all but one Ritualist, honestly, since I'm not splashing or ramping, really. So maybe that's the reason people are underrating it, because <laughs> you don't always have a need for it. Um, if I play, if I splash the Javelinier, I'd probably also splash Hour of Glory. It's worth noting. Uh, it's also a four. Yeah, I think I'll take the Javelinier, see if we can splash it. Another javelin ear. Don't think I want to be splashing two. There's a canyon slough, which could help us. Uh, Stinging shot's a good sideboard card. Quarry hauler's fine. Works with our edifice and our javelin ear. It's less good than it used to be because there's not as many minus one, minus one counters in this format. I might just take the land here. Cradle of the Cursed works with our excavator, but you know, not really worth it. I think I'll just take the land. Definitely helps us splash. Might splash both of those, and at this point, well, for splashing, I guess I'll probably play two Ritualists. Not much of a curve at this point. We just have six, six two drops, six three drops, and six four drops, as opposed to an actual curve. Channeler Initiate, hello. Speaking of ramping. Oh, I wouldn't mind a Sandworm coming back if we're really going to be in a, in a ramping strategy. Channeler Initiate is just great in anything. It also helps us fix even more, and it's better than an Oasis Ritualist because it gets to be big. Um, that and Sandworm are really the only things worth looking at in that pack. Okay. We got an okay two drop. We got an okay combat trick, and we have a very good sideboard card. That's sometimes main boardable. None of these are very exciting. Um, I like Gift of Strength more than Shed Weakness. I'll take Stinging Shot. Manglehorn is a little better than it used to be. There's a few more artifacts, but you gotta take Hooded Brawler. I think I want it more than Colossipede too. It's just very good aggressive three drop. It was definitely a card that is overly powerful. Like they made it a little too good, I think, cause it's just such a good common. One of the best things you can do on turn three in this format at any rarity. So I'm happy to have him on board. Uh, Gift of Paradise helps us splash, but I feel like we're pretty much set there. Hyena pack isn't something we want. Don't like harvest season, so I'm gonna take a giant spider for my sideboard. And we're definitely not really ramping. Um, well, there's a Weaver of Currents. If we'd end up blue-green, that would have been nice. I mean, Pouncing Cheetah, I guess. Don't really like the card a whole lot. I think all of our threes Maybe it's a little better than the Excavator. We do have one Cycling Land now, though, so got one one little upside. Ornery Kudu is fine. I don't know if I'll end up playing it in the end, but I might. Yeah, we're definitely in the mold of just like a super aggressive deck. Blue is very open. To both Toss Crop Skirmisher and Gale Striker cards, you should feel fine about main, main decking. Floodwaters even sometimes. Decision Paralysis a little to a lesser degree. I'm going to take the Gale Strike just because I like that card a lot. Overperformed for me in the old format. So we're definitely just an aggro deck with some nice removal to back it up. Don't know that I need to be splashing, but might as well when I have Channeler Initiate and two Oasis Ritualists and a Canyon Sloth. Another Stinging Shot. I don't think in a three-color deck we really want Cradle of the Cursed, so we're just going to take another Stinging Shot for the sideboard. I think I am going to play my Kenras in the end. Um, yeah, I think I do play them in the end. Ritualists are really just there to help us splash. And we have a few... Do we have any... We have a few Mana Sinks, like 
Burning Fist Minotaur, an edifice of authority that they can help us pay for. Merciless Javelinier, Frontline Devastator. So they're not completely useless. Don't think we want to run all three of them, though. I'll take an Unburden here for my sideboard. Though it is double black, so... It's more likely to get sighted in than an Oashra Cultivator, though, I feel like. Harvest Season. So we are going to need... Like a couple more cards, probably. So I may end up main boarding stinging shots. I think I like that plan. At least one of them's gonna get main boarded. Yeah. And foil forest. Let's close things out. So we got one land that actually interacts with our friend Ramanoth Excavator. That's a thing. Um, okay, so I think, do we want 17 land in this deck or 16? We have mana sinks. We have three creatures that produce mana. We have a little bit of cycling, which makes it a little easier to run 16 lands. We have lots of twos. We also have lots of fours though on the flip side. This is basically a three. Um, what would I run, though? I guess I'd run a second singing shot or a third Oasis Ritualist or, like, a Pouncing Cheetah or something. None of which is exciting. So I think I am just going to go with 17 lands. I'm a little worried about flooding, of course. This is the only land I have that has sort of flood insurance attached to it, so, so I can just pitch it. But it's also a source of black, so there's some tension there about what I want to do with it. Um, yeah, I think I'll run 17. I could see going with 16. Maybe I do want to go with 16. I keep going back on it. Yeah, let's just go with 16. We'll run two stinging shots. And... Definitely greener than we are anything else. This doesn't produce green, it produces red. Um... And this is basically a red spell, it's worth noting. Um, we're going to run... Do we even need to run one swamp, honestly? I don't know that we do. We basically have four sources of black main board. So I think that's probably enough. So I think I just go like 8-7. That gives me eight sources of um, red, eight sources of green. Yeah. And... Four sources, and, and you know, I'm not counting the Ritualists or the Channeler Initiate. Four sources of black, though. If I had an Evolving Wilds, I'd of course play one swamp, but I don't. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and roll with this. I could think about cutting Hour of Glory and just splashing the Javelin here, but I think our mana's fine, thanks to our, um, you know, mana fixing guys. So this will be our deck. Um, I'll see you guys in the first match. Right, first match of an Hour of Devastation draft, and we would like to play first. Um, wow. Deck full of two drops, and that's what we get, huh? And 16 lands, and we got five of them. Um, yeah, I mean, we also have a lot of fours, to be fair. So, you know, I guess it's close to the same probability. I think we have to mulligan it, though. I mean, we have a good chance, an okay chance to draw well, but we have to do it. So, I'm going to mulligan. Wow, that is even worse. Well, we're going to go to five. Probably going to get a one lander now, and we do. So I think I'm going to keep this one. we got to scry until we see a land. That is not a land, but this may be a game where we don't get to play very much magic. Which is, you know, not ever very fun. But that's okay. If we draw any kind of land, we can at least cycle Stinging Shot. And if we draw a forest, our opponent will have no idea that we started so badly. Can we do it? We can't. But we did draw lands. So that's better than not drawing one. And we're going to cycle away Stinging Shot for sure. Does our opponent have like Gust Walker or something disgusting? I guess I could kill Gust Walker with Stinging Shot. This is like the new Gust Walker, although I don't think it, it's obviously not quite as good, but it's the, the push to drop with Exert in uh, Hour of Devastation. So we're going to cycle. Got to see some green mana. Any mana. I'll take any mana now. Okay, green mana. All right, um, I'm going to play the Scrapper. We could leave up mana and use Open Fire on a Catcher's Avenger, but... Uh, yeah, no, I'm not really feeling it. 
My opponent has to exert it. Uh, they don't have to. I guess I could trade. Which is what I would do, I think, if he attacks here. I would just trade. Feel less good about it than I do if I have mana up for open fire, but it's a good chance it just gets exerted. Oh, he's not exerting it. You know what? I changed my mind. I'm just going to take it. <laughs> my Oasis Ritualist can just block this all day, so... That is relevant, I think. Solitary Camel. Okay. If I don't draw a land, should I play Ronus as Stalwart or leave mana up for open fire? If I draw a land, I think I just play Oasis Ritualist. See what we do. Well, that works for me, I think. Yeah, I think we just play the Kenra. Yeah, we're just gonna play this Kenra. Pump our Kenra Scrapper. We have lots of Kenras in our deck, I just noticed. We have two of the Vanilla 2-2 guy as well. And I'm willing to trade him for either of these, especially because he can come back in the later part of the game, which we can ramp into with the help of o Oasis Ritualist, so. We'll attack for four here that he, he just can't block. No reason to exert here. Getting in for two more damage isn't worth him not untapping, basically. At this point of the game. Sometimes it's worth it. Hey, we're doing pretty well considering we started with a one land, five, five card hand. So, there's a very good chance our opponent has a trick, but uh, I'm fine with that. Trading for a trick is, is fine with me. And I think killing this before my opponent has a desert is probably an okay plan. Trying to kill it. Our opponent almost certainly has a trick, like I said. Maybe not. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna have to open fire that, obviously. We can't really... Can't really abide for that to exist. So we're just gonna say... Open fire. Can't let our opponent cheat something into play. Um, and I think we attack. It's a race we lose right now, certainly, but if we ever draw our fourth land, we can play Hour of Glory um, when we'll have a good blocker, too. Feral Prowler. Not super scary, so I'm happy for that. It's going to bash in for three again. God, we cannot catch a break on the mana, on the drawing cards here. Um, I think we play Burning Fist Minotaur. It forces our opponent to exert, basically, or use a trick, um, one or the other. Uh, I think I like that more than Ronus' Stalwart at this point. I am going to attack here. Attack away. Can't be blocked. Unless we're, you know, our opponent could have Sandblast or something. I'd be okay with that. I prefer he didn't, of course, but it wouldn't be a big deal. That Scrapper is has played a big role in keeping us in this game, though. So we're going to play Burning Fist Minotaur. Really need that fourth land. So this is going to force him to exert his Oketra's Avenger or use a trick. Either one I'm okay with because, yeah. It's... Ooh, never mind. <laughs> we really need to draw our one man land that produces black mana right now because we wouldn't be able to cast anything with it yet. Because now he can exert this and just tap down my Burning Fist Minotaur. Which he does. And we take four. Ouch. Wow. Okay, Ronus is stalwart. Um, my opponent can exert one creature. I think we just hang back this time. We have to hope, we just have to hope. 
we can kill his Vizier of the True no matter what he taps down when he exerts it. So we have that going for us. Hello, that's very nice. So we can tap down two things this time around. But we're going to be able to play Hour of Glory soon enough. Um, so that's good. But we have to not attack again. We are... We can also bring back Resilient Kenra, by the way. Um, with the help of Oasis Ritualist right now. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, depending on what my opponent does. It could just be a surprise, like, four damage out of nowhere, which would be pretty nice. All right, so what are you going to tap down? Okay, that makes sense. And that also makes sense. All right. So I think we basically have to block Initiate's Companion. And we basically have to block Vizier of the True. We have to hope our opponent doesn't have any tricks. Um, which means we have to give up two of our creatures, basically. So I'm going to block there. And I'm going to block here. And I'll take four and go to three. If our opponent just has a trick, uh, like the plus three, plus three one, we're dead, obviously. But And they probably do. Yeah, I was going to say, given that they attacked in this situation, they probably have it. Because it's not the best situation to attack into, unless you know your opponent's dead. And they did. All right, well, I think we put up a good fight, considering we mulligan to five. Um... Stinging Shot didn't really have any targets in that game, it's worth noting. But I still think it's better than, like, Pouncing Cheetah. It's, there's got to be some flyers in his deck, you know? Yeah, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna run this back out there. Try to start the game with more than five cards in our hand. Would like to play first. Okay, this is a good one. Um... Not amazing. We don't have a two drop or anything. We can cycle on turn two basically, but or just pump our sand wall, which is fine too. It's probably just what I'll do. We do have our edifice to help lock down something, which is quite nice. But we did keep a hand with seven cards, and that is that's a big improvement. I cycle or pump? I think I pump. Next turn, probably play my edifice. Yeah, we'll pump. Get in for three here. We have a black mana source if we draw either of our cards or splashing. And we'll end our turn. Okay, well, I like my opponent not building a board at all and then getting to play my Edifice of Authority. Um, I'm not going to pump my Sand Wall this time because I'm just going to play the Edifice. I'm just going to get in for the one. It always feels bad when you play Edifice against an opponent who's just like building their board and you're just like, what's up, Edifice of Authority, have fun smashing me in the face. But that's not what our opponent's doing, so I feel pretty good about it. He could have mainboarded a way to destroy it, but uh, that's not a huge deal. Okay. So... What do I do here? Do I play my Devastator? Do I attack with my Sandwalla? I think playing the Devastator is probably better. And we just resign ourselves to taking three here. I guess I could have attacked with the Sandwalla and then taken the trade and then used my Edifice to get a brick counter, but starting next turn, it won't be hard to start building brick counters on it.
take three. No deserts, at least, so no lifelink. Opponent may cycle a land at instant speed, I guess, and gain lifelink. God, we don't have a way to kill that this time. We do have a way to stop it from attacking, though, so I guess I can stop freaking out. Stinging shot number two. Okay, um... I am going to attack with Frontline Devastator. If it just trades and does two to my opponent, I feel perfectly fine about that. Right, yeah, opponent's just gonna take it. Not pumping it at all. I'm gonna play land, and I'm also gonna play uh, Oasis Ritualist, who can just block Solitary Camel, it's worth noting. And we also have mana up to use my edifice to keep the champion from attacking. So, I like the looks of things right now. All right, so obviously we don't want this attacking. If he uses a trick with his camel to kill my ritualist, I think I'm okay with it. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. There's a very good chance he has it, but I think that's an okay trade. Um, one I'm willing to make. Ambuscade. Oh, that I'm not willing to make. Brutal. That is brutal. Hmm. I still kill him. So there's that. But... Yeah, that's that's pretty gross. Hoping my opponent doesn't play any more creatures here, but we're not that lucky. Luckily, it's not the scariest creature. Okay, I think I'm going to play Defiant Kenra, and then just leave mana up for Edifice of Authority and Cycling Stinging Shot. And Pumping Sandwalla, you know, all those things. I'm glad he didn't get a straight up two for one there. He almost did, but it was just a two for two, which isn't quite as devastating. No thank you, Champion of Ronis. I think I'll just take one if he attacks with his Prowler, honestly. Yeah, he's going to. I'm just going to take it. I'd rather do that than let my opponent trade with Defiant Kenra, like a trick for Defiant Kenra, or let my opponent draw a card by pumping Sandwalla. Also leaves me mana to cycle, which seems pretty important, since my opponent has like no flyers and Stinging Shot is pretty ugly. Maybe they'll play a flyer now. I can just take it out of the sky. Could be the 3 3 Haven. Oh, it's Ramonap Hydra. That's gross. Our opponent, we haven't actually seen our opponent play any deserts, but they have played two cards that care about them, and Ramonap Hydra really cares about them. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna cycle this. Hey, Remnant Excavator. Alright, we're gonna play our Excavator. I'm gonna play a land. I wanna try to trade my Sandwalla, I think, for the Ramanop Hydra. I'd still rather it attack than uh, the Champion of Ronus, which could just cheat something into play. We're definitely stuck in sort of having to uh, be defensive, though, which isn't great for us. It's not a good sign. Okay, 
so no thank you all right so opponent probably has a trick they may even be able to cycle a desert at instant speed um should i just take three and i'm actually thinking i am just gonna take three that's what's fun about these desert cards is sometimes you can cycle a desert like as a sort of combat trick which is pretty nice he's gonna play something else scary which is not good for us yeah that's pretty scary we're gonna cycle another stinging shot draw a land gross okay we're not we're not looking too good um We will end our turn. Um, I think we still make Champion of Ronus unable to attack or block now. Because <laughs> we have the full number of counters. We can also turn off activated abilities with it, but it doesn't matter. None of these creatures have them. I feel like I'm just going to get blown out really hard by a trick. Seems very likely. Ooh, well, there's that too. Now this makes me make a difficult decision. Um, now I wish I had Stinging Shot, sort of. <laughs> I would be able to kill this, basically. Um, at the end of the turn, it would die anyway. So I think we still go... Actually, let's use the other ability. I think we still target the Champion of Ronus with that. And then I think I'm going to block both of these. See if I can't whittle down my opponent's board at all. I feel like if I can't, I'm just going to die. So I think I think we have to go for that here. Um, if we can reduce the number of creatures, we reduce the number of things we have to use our edifice on. I can do this once. Just making sure I could do it at instant speed, which I'm which pretty sure I could, since it's based on past root wallas, but... See if we get completely blown out here. I feel like I should probably claim one of these creatures. There is that trick, though, that pumps two different creatures, and that would be pretty devastating. Active heroism. Okay. So that's going to kill both of my creatures. All of my creatures are now dead, but it looks like we're going to kill the Hydra at least. What can I draw? <laughs> Do have removal that wouldn't hurt. Hooded Brawler also doesn't hurt. I think at this point I make the Bitter Bow Sharpshooters unable to attack. My opponent may get a free card, but I can at least block and kill the champion, and I can't do that with the Bitter Blow Arch. Bitter Bow Archers. Talking's hard. So yeah, we're gonna block, or not block, but make that unable to attack us. Champion Ronus did not get exerted, but I think I still trade with it. Does opponent have another trick? <laughs> probably, we're probably about to cry. They have another trick here. It's pretty close to over. Doesn't look like they do, or at least they're not using one. Don't play anything. Oh, good. Now give me a spell. I know you want to, deck. Hmm. Great. Okay. Well, we can at least shut down bitter bow archers, sharpshooters, whatever, whatever it is. We're gonna do it and take one for a while. And if we could just draw. An impactful creature of some kind, we'd be pretty happy. Okay, now I can kill the archers at least. Survive doesn't do a whole lot. Um, no, not really. It doesn't really just struggle matters. Ooh. <laughs> That is bad news. Oh, God. 
That's going to pump his Feral Prowler to a 2-4 and give it lifelink. Great, 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 great. Okay, plus the two cat tokens, you know. Yeah, we are... We are in trouble. I think we still target this. I think we probably kill Regal Caracal. It just represents way more damage right now than anything else. We'll only take one this turn. My opponent won't gain any life, etc. The one thing Struggle would do, or I mean Survive would do, would make it... I would have a lower chance of drawing lands, but so would my opponent. So... It's not really a big deal. So we're gonna kill that stupid Caracal. Take one. If I just draw another land, I'd probably use survive. I mean, why not? <laughs> probably put the Caracal back on top of my opponent's library. We do not have black mana. Ouch, okay. All right. Well, I don't really see any reason to cast Survive. We pass, we take three. We really need to draw some action. Not second Regal Caracal? No, just Overcome for the win. All right, well, we kind of got stomped. Um, our opponent's deck was very good. And uh, ours didn't really didn't really showcase anything that I was hoping it would. We didn't really have like a great curve out or anything like that, which is I think what we want this deck to do. Um, but you know, may not be the most consistent deck ever with all the fours we have in it. Um, but you know, we'll see in the next match. All right, going to the second match of an Hour of Devastation draft. This is a pretty good hand. I wish I was on the play with as aggressive of creatures as I have, but it's still pretty good. We have good removal and two good two drops and both colors, so hard to say no to any of that. Um, yeah, the question is, do I play the Stalwart or the Burning Fist Minotaur first? I think I'd probably play the Stalwart first. I think that's probably my plan. Uh, maybe the Minotaur now, actually. <laughs> Since the Minotaur... I have to exert this to attack through a Ruin Rat, and the Minotaur doesn't have to do that. So, yeah, let's just go with the Minotaur. Opponent could have a minus one, minus one counter or something, but... What are you going to do? I hate having to use Open Fire on a Ruin Rat. That's what makes a card like Ruin Rat so good, though, is... <laughs> You know, it trades with anything, and you end up having to use a stupid removal spell on it. Um, if you don't, like, you know, you can make it bad, certainly. If you have lots of ways of making creature tokens and things like that, it gets to be pretty bad. Um, like, if you have a Ketra's Monument, Ruin Rat isn't very good. But uh, against my deck, you know, it's pretty good. <laughs> I can't really do anything to kill it in a reasonable fashion. Like, I don't have Magma Spray or something like that. I have to spend three mana to kill it. So, a little less than ideal. I'll just take it. Okay. Afflict is fun. Um, so, do I attack with my Minotaur or not? I don't want to leave mana up, I don't think. I think I'd rather play my Ronus' Stalwart. The question is, do I attack with my Burning Fist Minotaur? Um, and the answer is maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to. Hit him for two. And play Ronus' Stalwart. So I'm going to take like at least three this turn. I don't plan on blocking Spellweaver Eternal. I'll probably have to use one of my open fires or struggle on it at some point. Um, because Afflict. And it's, yeah, you feel pretty bad trading against Spellweaver Eternal. Like especially when it's a good card like this who right now can become unblockable. 
So I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll, I'll just take two. I'll definitely just take two. Okay, well, we probably have to kill that. Um, so I think we do. Uh, if I do it now, it lets me attack. So I think I will do it now. Um, open fire can go to the dome, but struggle can kill way bigger creatures if I have to. So I think I'm just going to use open fire. And attack with my first striker. By the way, this is a zombie, so you could have made it indestructible, which wouldn't have been a lot of fun. This does mean my opponent can swing back at me for three, but I think that's okay. Probably something we're going to have to cast Survive on. Yep. I mean, Struggle. Whatever. Whatever it is, we're going to have to cast it. I put up my attack with both their creatures. No. That is not what I expected to happen there. Okay, so we're just gonna go struggle. And do I exert you? Is it worth it? I don't really feel like it is at this point. Definitely attacking with my Burning Fist Minotaur. Um, Although, honestly, I'm not planning on blocking either, so I'm exerting. Yeah, let's just exert. Let's do it. Can't block it. So, we get in for at least three and maybe more. I can pump him, at, you know, if I wanted to, but I don't think it's worth it right now. Drop our opponent to 11. Still have another kill spell in our hand, although it's not going to be able to kill another ominous sphinx-sized creature. Um, survive is just so underwhelming like you know it's definitely worth using if your opponent gets a desert in their graveyard or a card with aftermath or something but just so <laughs> it's an interesting design on this one because usually there's like a closer to an even split on the split cards that's not true of all of them I mean cut to ribbons is you know a lot of it's cut um and uh, farm to market in Hour of Devastation, a lot of it's farm, but I think this is the most lopsided one where it's like 95% of the reason you're playing it, well, 99 even, is because of uh, str a struggle, not because of the other half. Okay, so I'm going to attack with my Minotaur here. See what my opponent has planned. We have open fire to break up some shenanigans. I mean, if he has a removal spell, obviously we can't do anything about that, but uh, open fire can, like if he uses a trick here, casting open fire is gonna feel a lot better. Okay, using a trick, please use a trick. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna go open fire. Get the two for one. He can exile my aftermath card, <laughs> as I was just noting. I don't think I really care. I'm not gonna pump my guy again. I'm just gonna play Frilled Sandwalla. Yeah, he did exile struggle to survive. Two for one is good. Oh, we don't drop our opponent tonight. What am I talking about? Play Frilled Sandwalla. I think I'm gonna hold on to this forest. Uh, yeah, I am, because I want to have things to discard to my Burning Fist Minotaur to really represent a ton of damage. Ooh, hello. Okay. Um, I think we pump Ronus's Stalwart since I can make it unblockable. Yeah, we'll play our Kenra. this although uh if he has a way to give his guy um make it a three three two obviously then 
it won't be unblockable, but I still think it's a, a good choice. Now I kind of have a little more pressure on me to actually play my next land so that I can use both of these activated abilities and so that I can use Eternalize. I'm just going to kill my stalwart, it looks like. Yes. We're just going to take three from the Torment, I think. Okay, so that pumps this guy up to a 3-2. Uh, we're going to lose three life. For sure. All right. Well, fine. Um... Yeah, we're going to play this. And we're going to attack. All right, yeah, so he's going to trade with my sand wallet, it looks like. He might, he might have a way to not let his guy die, but that seems pretty unlikely. And it goes to nine. This frontline devastator has been in our hand forever. <laughs> oh god. Okay, good. Just a blighted bat. His creatures are have all been really, really bad against Burning Fist Minotaur, <laughs> which has been which has worked out for us. Um, I think here we probably just play the devastator. We're we have our opponent on his back foot, uh, so I think that's just going to be better. Kenra here we're of course willing to trade with because of Eternalize. Um, I may even just discard Oasis Ritualist if my opponent takes it here. Or does something... I don't know, depends what he does. Um, eh, I think we'll just let him go to 5. Afflict is going to become very powerful once our opponent's lower on life. Yeah, and that's, you know, we're very happy with that trade. Since we can just bring it back next turn and pump up one of our guys, so... Yeah, we're going to play Frontline Devastator. I guess we're glad that our opponent's rat died when it did, because losing Resilient Kenra is way worse than losing Struggle to Survive. Okay. What else you got? Oh, Lethal Sting. Let's see how it is. Um... Yeah, I think we just we just eternalize here. It does, you know, he's just gonna block my uh, huge creature, but it also gives me a four four in the process. And our opponent's also out of cards, so we feel pretty solid about that decision. Um, I'll get rid of his last creature. And we still have a 2-1 on the first strike, who we can pump twice, and a 4-4. So, yeah. So we win game one there. Um, Stinging Shot seems okay. We saw our friend Ominous Sphinx. Uh, Giant Spider doesn't seem like it's better. Having Cycling is probably just better. All right. Okay, this seems like a solid hand. Um, we have a two drop, removal, edifice, and uh, you know our amazing Ramanop excavator. Who the biggest thing it's going to do is be sold for three tickets after this. <laughs> Unless I get my cycling land, that would be nice to at least once do something with it. But what are you going to do? Ooh, hello. All right. Well, that's what we're playing on turn two now. For sure. Just can write Eternal. Our friend. Um, play the Initiate. The Initiate will enable us to play and start using Edifice of Authority next turn. So that's pretty good. Yeah. 
Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> okay, so much for that plan. Channeler initiate is done. That's always the risk with Channeler initiate that, that it'll just get eaten. We have open fire. And it might just be right to just play open fire at this point. I think it probably is. Because if I play Edifice of Authority, I have to eat some more damage. Um, and next turn I can play it and use it. My opponent probably won't have more than one creature for me to shut down. So, yeah. So, I think that's my plan. That is my plan. So, we're going to play the Edifice. Start building it up. So we effectively, it was like a two for two in the end. Between Although my opponent, you know, gained three life and did three damage to us in the process. So he definitely came out ahead on that two for two. And killed, you know, Chandler Initiate. So quality of cards dealt with. Also higher for our opponent. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason for us not to do this. I like not taking two damage, and we don't have anything else anyway. So, yeah, we, he has, uh, well, I'm really glad we have Stinging Shot main board, actually. Um, so, what do I want to do here? I think I'm going to play the Excavator. And in my turn. Now we have to stop Bone Picker from attacking, obviously. What we really need to do is draw one of our two stinging shots. This also makes Giant Spider look a little better. If we go to game three, like being able to have Giant Spider against two, you know, one really high quality flyer and against an, an okay one is not bad. But two stinging shots is probably enough hate, you know. Lethal Sting. Wow. That is aggressive. You're not worried about my Excavator, huh? So... Yeah, we'll, we'll do it to the Bone Picker. Why not? And we'll take two. Okay, so now I can play, I think I go Sandwalla, Kudu. I'm not, I'm going to put the counter on the Kudu, not, not doing anything special. I don't want to kill my Sandwalla a whole lot. On stingy shot. All right, so we're all the way up. Now we can actually attack through Bone Picker and keep it from attacking on our opponent's turn, which is pretty nice. Um, of course, it depends on what else our opponent does. Shimmer Skill Drake. Okay, well, what's with all these flyers? <laughs> uh, where's stinging shot when you need it? Um. Okay. So I think I'm going to say this. And I'm going to attack with both my creatures since obviously none of my creatures have flying or reach or anything. So get in there. Likely that the opponent just takes it. I'm going to take four this turn in the air. Um, and then I'm going to go Ronus's Stalwart. Defiant Kenra. Come on, stinging shot. <laughs> that would solve. That would slow things down a lot if we could get a stinging shot to kill one of these guys. Now what? Ancient Crab. Okay, well. Oh, and Ruin Rat. All right. Oh, there we go. That will help. Um, 
So I'm going to attack with my stalwart and exert it. And then I'm also I'm going to do this now. Um, say goodbye to this. Now we can shut down a flyer every turn. I'm not going to do it yet because it wouldn't really it wasn't really going to affect my attack. So I'm going to wait until my opponent's combat phase to decide what I want to tap down. Or keep from attacking or blocking. You don't really tap it. Alright, so definitely I think we go with Bone Picker. More removal. Please. We go to seven. Opponent is out of gas. Okay. Defiant Kenra, huh? So I don't really think it's worth playing my Kenra right now. I'd rather play Frontline Devastator. Um Yeah, I wouldn't really have any good attacks either. Take two to the face again, go to five. Where are those stinging shots now that I need them? I like drew them all against, oh God, yeah, we're, we're dead, I think. Just too much going on in the air for us to put a stop to. We're not quite dead, we, we have one more turn to try to like survive. Um, we're gonna pick Aerial Guide because we don't really want him putting other things into the sky. Um, I'm gonna play Resilient Kenra, pump my Ronus's Stalwart. I can, yes, use Resilient Kenra's ability. Um, do I just attack with everything? I don't think we can quite attack with everything because we have to worry, one damage from either of those can kill us, so. Um, I'm going to be pretty aggressive here, though, because if we have any hope of winning this game, it's going to be that we get in for enough here to kill our opponent next turn, which is pretty unlikely, but uh, could happen. Okay, so I'm going to leave these two Kenras behind. Yeah, he has three blockers, so... Definitely relevant. Um, it's going to be worth it more probably to pump my Frilled Sandwalla than it is to pump my Frontline Devastator, but we'll see. We will see. So that's 13 damage if our opponent, for some reason, decided to just take it. Uh, it seems unlikely that they do that, but hey. Yep. And okay, well now there's no point in pumping anything. But we do get in for seven, oh, nine actually, because of Afflict, so. Gonna exile, struggle to survive again. Yeah. We're in a struggle to survive right now. Okay. And in my turn. I'm not, I'm pretty sure we have no way to win this game, barring our opponent like attacking with everything here, <laughs> which would be crazy, but <laughs> you know, I'll take it. Even if they do, this isn't untapping, so we still can't kill him, actually. All right, so bring the thunder. Drop me to one. Maybe they'll be conservative because they're scared now. 
Uh, they are being a little conservative. It's not that conservative, though, because they can just kill me next turn in the air. So it's a little safer to leave a blocker back there. I think, I think that move makes sense. God, I love Aerial Guide. Now I don't have to play against it, though. What do we draw? That. Okay. Well, we lose game two. Let's see if we can win game three. I think we can. Where are our stinging shots? We're definitely bringing in Giant Spider now. I can tell you that. Um, and maybe we cut out our Javelin or something. Just splash for Hour of Glory. Although the Javelinier kills a lot of creatures in the deck. Maybe we'd rather cut Hour of Glory. Yeah, let's do that. We have plenty of removal. I need you guys. Or you. Hmm, well, there's Stinging Shot. We just don't have any red mana, and so I think we have to send it back, sadly. All right, that's a reasonable hand. We have a one drop and a two drop anyway. Can we get a three drop? We do get a three drop. Um, yeah, I think we keep that. Seems fine. Sandwalla. Gonna attack with my Sandwalla. Should have probably played my land first, but I'm not planning on pumping him anyway. But you know, threatening that I'm going to pump him is sometimes worth it. Not really worth it on an empty board when my opponent has one mana, I guess. But it's usually the right thing to do. Ruin rat. I don't hate trading for it with either of these. Um, so I'm going to attack. They're both twos, so it doesn't hurt to trade with it as much as it does to have to cast like open fire on it. You know, we're, we're trading evenly in terms of mana and cards. Uh, or less than evenly in the case of the sand wall. So we're just going to take that. Okay, I'm just going to do the three. And I think I'm going to put the counter on my Kenro with my Kudu. Yeah. So we have a three, four. Okay, hey, Chandler initiated again. That's nice. Um, all right, well, we're going to attack with our 1-1 Kenra and our 1-1 Frilled Sandwalla here. Something's happening. Oh, Splendid Agony. Well, no, nah, it's not worth it. Not worth it, no. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye to you both. That hurts. Hopefully he doesn't just freaking play um, the, uh, the spell to just kill it again. Especially if it's the freaking cartouche, that, that hurts. Not looking great for us at this point though. Okay, Naga Oracle. Luckily not something I'm super concerned about. This Ruin Rat's more of a problem. Does look like we're gonna actually get to remove a minus one, minus one counter from our Channeler Initiate this time. So we have that going for us. Probably just play Oasis Ritualist.
Um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add white, because why not? Um, yeah, I'll play this land. And in my turn. Well, we can take that down with Gift of Strength, assuming our opponent doesn't also have a card to cycle, which would be awful. Ooh, I like seeing you. We can play the Minotaur here, and in my turn. Minotaur will be able to attack on this board, especially if we take down the Sphinx in the sky with um, Gift of Strength. I think it's a little dangerous to use it on my 2-1 because we know our opponent has stuff like Splendid Agony. So I'm not going to use my Burning Fist Minotaur to block. Plus he could lower its power. There's a lot of stuff that could go wrong. Um, okay, well. He's going to kill my Burning Fist Minotaur now, so we're not going to have the choice. Uh, kind of sucks. We can still kill it, though. Although if he has a card to cycle, we're going to be we're going to be very very sad because or we won't be able to kill it anymore. I haven't seen a lot of cycling out of him, but um Actually, let's do that and then cast it on one Rikudu. Opponent has Unsummon or something. We're also in a lot of trouble here. Um, there's a lot that can go wrong right here. A lot. Okay. Just cycling a card. I mean, if he just cycles a card, we at least don't get two for one or anything. It's just we just used a card for nothing, basically, and our creature will stay alive, but it won't be able to kill his creature. Which, oh no, <laughs> he has a card to cycle. Okay, yeah, I think I think we're in trouble now. If we weren't already, we definitely are now. Okay. Open freaking fire. How nice and useful. Um, yeah, that's bad. Very, very bad. We need like stinging shot plus open fire. We're just gonna pass. We gotta draw something that isn't open fire. Stupid cycling. This card's so good. That's why I wish we'd been able to play ours. We're gonna take five, opponent goes to 26. I think I'm gonna leave the counter on in case I draw my Minotaur that needs black mana. Uh, we need Struggle to Survive and an additional land to be able to kill um, Ominous Sphinx. Oh good, another thing that can't die to Open Fire. Um, I think I'm just going to use Open Fire on De Ruin Rat here. Hey, Stinging Shot. Okay, well, now I wish I'd held on to Open Fire, but... The question is, is it going to be better to just like sort of blank the Shimmer Scale Drake down to being a 0-1? I think it probably will be better than shrinking this to a 2-2. Two, two. Probably. I'm definitely doing one or the other. Um, yeah, we'll use it here. Take five. We're on a three-turn clock here. God, he keeps drawing gas too. What is what is this? Cursed horde. Okay, great. 
can block that, at least with my Oasis Ritualist. Hmm. Just gonna end my turn. We had the one game where things went well for us. That was nice, right? <laughs> Other games were all kind of ugly. All right. We go to five, so we have to draw something this turn to get out of this. And yeah, so we didn't. So, all right, well, we went 0 and 2, which is certainly a dud. I think our deck was fine. It wasn't certainly wasn't amazing, but I feel like we probably should have been better than 0 and 2, but that's the way things break sometimes. So, thanks for watching. If you want to see more draft videos, uh, over on my channel, Neat Zone Magic, you can find more of them. Uh, I post one every week over there as well. And if you want to make sure you catch a lot of other great uh, magic content, you can subscribe here to the Ether Hub, where we supply you guys with all kinds of content, including my draft videos. So, thanks for watching.